I am back again with Greg Kurda, and we've been talking a little bit about how sound and character are connected and also how important it is to have a good story before you add in all that extra stuff. Yeah. Tell us, uh, so what do you think about that? Because you were talking about your students and how often we get so concerned with other things and we forget about the story. Well, the... In any in any motion picture, in any play, in any um, dramatic representation, let's mm-hmm. say, um, the most important thing is always the story. And it is, it, story gets lost in all this technology. It's you know, it's about the camera, it's about the sound, it's about all this stuff, and it's really not. It's about the story, and it's about the characters, and. These are the simplest concepts, yet the most difficult to grasp. And um, sometimes you can help build a character. Oh, great example. Um, A music example. We have have a shot of a guy staring off into space. We have a shot of a girl staring off into space. Cut back to the guy staring off into space. Cut back to the girl staring off into space. Without music, these are just two kids staring off into space for no apparent reason. Put in the love music, and suddenly they're pining for each other, thinking of the, all those times, blah, 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 blah. Wait a minute. Where did that come from? It came from our brain. Mm-hmm. You know, and we were able to construct this whole new concept based on one piece of sound. And that's a challenge if you're reading a book, for example, because you don't have the physical sound, so you somehow have to figure out how you can convey that idea of sound in words. Right, and I I think that's one of the one of the challenges, for instance, turning a book into a movie, is that you you know each reader will have a kind of a separate um, interpretation of of what the the sounds that go with that story. Your brain will invent them, mm-hmm. but enough readers will have similar views on several of the scenes. So that's where, that's your starting point, okay? And then you can develop, you can develop your characters even further by, by creating certain sounds for these characters that evoke a certain feeling. Uh, in music, for instance, we have two basic scales, uh, a major scale and a minor scale. Mm-hmm. And this was figured out years ago by the Greeks, right? Um, the major scale is happy, minor scale is sad. So, I mean, that still plays today, mm-hmm. it, and it plays an important part. If the, you know, if the if the, the the boy and the girl, if they're separated from each other, you know, for some unknown reason, um, the music is going to be sad. If they're going to get back together, the music's going to be happy. And this is, you know, it has a psychological effect on the viewer. Mm-hmm. And this is this has been known for years and years and years, and it's used all the time. So, um, even in simple something as simple as footsteps, you can shape your character just by the sound of their footsteps. And this is used all the time with foley artists; they they're masters at this. Um, they can create. A certain character, perhaps a guy, his gait is not precise. He's a little sloppier in his walk. His footsteps reflect that. And you, now you get the idea that maybe he's not Mr. Neat at home. Okay, so you can, you can you know, parlay this into a lot of character um, uh, assets. And those are things we call indirect characterization. Right. Because you learn about the character from things around them and not... He was a tall man. Exactly. It's, it's the, the things... And that's better. Mm-hmm. It's better not to have to, to use exposition to describe your characters. Let the character, you know, find itself. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's interesting what you can do. It is, and I think that that's something to think about, both if we're making movies or audio programs or if we're writing that we need to find ways to make our characters richer by the things that surround them. Right. And envision envision the surrounding circumstances and just write that down too. Mm-hmm. You know, give a give the fullest description that you can of what what you think is happening. Also, when you're watching movies now, 
take a look at this stuff. See if you can see by using, what are they doing by using this certain sound here? I mean, not at a micro level, but on a macro level. How does it make you feel? You know, can you understand? Do you cry? Why do you cry? And you know? that is a great activity to do with your students because it's getting them to think about things in a deeper, richer way and also something that's perhaps motivating and engaging for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And fun. And fun. Well, thank you very much, Greg. Nice, as always, You're to talk welcome. to you. Thank you. Yeah.